Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and we're going to talk about some interoperability options with SketchUp 2025. Specifically, we're going to talk about some enhanced IFC interoperability and some Trimble Connect stuff. Uh, pretty cool, especially if you like things like data in your model or keeping the model consistent across multiple users important interoperability stuff. Let's take a look. All right, so first things first, uh, IFC import. So I just imported this model or this, this IFC model um, and I did skip it, I'm sorry, but file, import, IFC, and then uh, we pull it in. That's not the exciting part. The exciting part is what happens once it actually gets in here. So uh, the information, the data that comes in is much more useful, much more well organized than ever before. So if I come over here, I'll start with tags. When I look at this, all the things that are came in for IFC showed up on their own tags. So I don't have to worry about going through and figuring out where they're gonna be. It's all nested under a higher level group. So I have this IFC tags group and then based on the tag that was on each member, it put it into its own tag visibility here. So uh, makes it very easy to work through here. I can always reassign these too. I, I don't want them all in IFC tags. I wanna put them into a structural folder or something like that. I can do that. And I don't have to keep the names IFC beam either if I wanna just name it beam, but it makes it much easier to navigate. Same thing with the outliner here. Uh, as, we, as we get into some of this stuff, so if I come down here, I'm gonna go burrow down a little bit. We're gonna, we're gonna come in here, we're gonna go grab a beam, right? So I'm gonna come through here and you can see, uh, once I get down here to this point, I have those names of each of those individual pieces. And then of course, the one that I have highlighted, a lot of beams came in, but the one that I have selected right there, of course, uh, keep going, keep going. Oh, my fingers getting tired, so much scrolling. You can see a lot of data that I imported here. I didn't realize how much stuff I brought in here. Um, but you can actually see all the different pieces are in here. They're tagged, they're, they're nested, and uh, I can actually get down to the one piece that I want right there. Uh, one of the cool things is once I do select that, if I go up here to Tools, I'm sorry, if I go to Window and go to Component Options, it's gonna show me all the data for that piece. So as I look down here, it does have some stuff like what is the tag, a property set. So in here I have my, my Tecla information, my IFC material, uh, object type, name, description, classification. I'm just reading things off the screen at this point, but you guys can actually see all the data that comes in with this model. This is just straight import and all that information is available and it's in here inside of my SketchUp model. And uh, something I just wanted to touch on too. This isn't, this isn't specific to uh, importing, but one of the things that can happen when you import information, import data, is it can really mess with your scenes. You can see I had a whole lot of scenes across the top here. Um, a nice feature as part of 2025 version of SketchUp is the ability to control what tags and what scenes go on to what group, or what, I'm sorry, what scenes. I can right click here and I can say apply tags to scene by changing which tags are visible, which tags are not. So rather than you know something new coming in and always being on every scene, I can control that now and apply that only to the places that I want, which is really cool. Um, speaking of really cool, let's talk about Trimble Connect for a second. Um, Trimble Connect is a great way to store and share files. We all know that, but uh, some of the functionality that came up right now is it, it just takes it kind of to the next level. So I have this big model here and then separate from the rest of the model, I have this crane and it's in a component all its own. So if I come in here, this is all that's in there. Uh, what I can do is I can take just this component. It has to be a component. I can't do this with a group or loose geometry, but once it's in a component, I can hit save out to Trimble Connect. And then I can tell it, all right, I wanna put this out here. I'm gonna call it cranes. I'm gonna save it. Uh, yes, I wanna overwrite what already exists. Super cool. Now, here's the, yeah, that okay, that part wasn't that cool. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab my SketchUp for web window. And in this window, all I've done is I went to file, I went to Trimble Connect, open and open that same component. So you can see here I have same thing that was in there, that crane. And I'm gonna go ahead and paste into this model uh, a couple of cement trucks. I'm gonna do three of them. I was always told that when you do landscaping, you should have 
groups of three or five, because one looks weird, even numbers look weird. Now this isn't landscaping, but I think three is gonna look nice. Anyhow, once that's done, I've now changed the component, so I'm gonna hit save. That is now saving that back up to Trimble Connect. And if I go now, I'm gonna go ahead and move that window back off. We're gonna go back into SketchUp for desktop. And what I can do is I can select this component, right click, and hit reload from Trimble Connect. That's gonna go grab the updated version of the cranes file, hit reload. And not only do I have a crane in there now, but I have my additional cement trucks, not one, not two, not four, but three cement trucks. So this is a great way. What this allows people to do is work in different locations here on desktop over there in web, or it could be two instances of desktop. And two people can work on two distinct pieces at the same time. And then at any point they want, just update. And you can see here's the new, part, new parts there. I, I, I don't want to brag about myself, but I got pretty close to dropping these cement trucks right where they're supposed to be too. A little, I was just over the line here, but uh, that worked out pretty well. May want to include things like markings inside the components so I know where to put things like that, but you can see how that would be useful. Uh, multiple designers could be working on the same model, different pieces, and updating and checking on where the other model is as quick as a right click and a reload click there. And uh, yeah, that's some, some really cool interoperability options. And if you are a SketchUp Studio user, you're gonna have access to the updated Revit importer. And this is something that works better than it ever did for It is Windows, so I'm here on my Windows, and we go to import a Revit file and pull in this downloaded RVT file. I'll go ahead and click that import. And this is going to import the Revit data and convert it over into SketchUp information. And once that's imported, it's gonna tell us what exactly it imported, all the pieces, uh, if there's any issues with importing, things like materials. And we can see, if we look in Outliner, there's a hierarchy of all those materials. It created new tags for all of the imported information. Um, those should match the layers that were imported. And the information, the data, comes along with all of those pieces. So I can actually go in and we can burrow down here into the SketchUp model. And you can see there in the outliner, the information showing up for every Revit family imported, all the data and attributes assigned to it. And that is all up to date for the newest version in SketchUp Studio 2025. So hopefully they like that. And if you do work uh, in, you know, together with different file types or you work with uh, different multiple users, uh, you know, hopefully that's the stuff that is really going to help make your SketchUp process, your SketchUp modeling, your workflows even more efficient than it was before SketchUp 2025. Thank you.